thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, God. Just so you know, um, Malcolm is uh, about to start filming a new television series called Franklin and Bash uh, on this TNT network, uh, which is news to him. <laughs> So uh, look for that too. And he just finished an episode of The Mentalist, or he will be finishing an uh, episode of The Mentalist when he comes back from here. Uh, they asked him to, to film yesterday, and uh, he graciously said no, he had a prior engagement. And they were pissed. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> we'll turn it over to Malcolm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Glad to see it's so jammed up there. Thank you very much for showing up on a Saturday night. <laughs> Not much else going on in this town, is there? Let's face it. <laughs> um, listen, sorry? Did somebody say something? I heard something. <laughs> what? The party's getting jammed. If you want to say something, get up on your feet and what? say it. Okay, thank you. What did he say? I have no idea. Well, listen, um, this is a very nice crowd of horror maniacs. Nice to see you all. Oh, look at these. Oh my god. Dressed as Alex. Great bosoms hanging out. I never looked like that. Baby, I, if only I looked so good as that. You got the eyelash on? Great. Well, I think this is supposed to be a Q&A, so rather than me just waffle on, which I will anyway, has anybody got a seriously intelligent, intelligent being the operative word, question? I'd be happy to answer it. Yes, sir, what have you got to say? A few years ago, you worked with a movie icon, Stanley Kubrick. What was it like working with someone like that? Christ, here we go. <laughs> How long do we have here? <laughs> Stanley Kubrick, of course, was one of the great directors and, and still will go down in history as being one of the greatest directors that ever worked in our industry. When I worked with him, he, this is the group of films that he made. He'd made Paths of Glory, Lolita, Spartacus, Dr. Strangelove. Yes. Yes. 2001, Rockwork Orange. Not bad, huh? And I thought I was going to see Stanley Kramer. That shows you how naive I was. Stanley was uh, an extraordinary intellect, an amazing man, really. Um, very, very intelligent. He was a grandmaster at chess. Uh, that's why I would never play chess with him. I could kick his ass at ping pong. I wouldn't touch the chessboard with him. He was an amazing chess master. Um, he was interested in everything that, uh, to do with the you know, technology of anything. Music, the greatest hi-fi, the greatest this, that and the other. And, and in a way, it was rather sad that he kind of passed before the real advent of uh, the internet and uh, computers really took hold. But, he had his own computer, you know, he, he took me in to show me this incredible, um, he'd come up with this incredible system uh, for filing, and it was like a huge carousel. It went up to the ceiling, and you swung it, and the files were all tucked into this thing. He, it was, so he, you know, he was showing me very proudly this thing, and, and I, you know, and he said to me, you ask me anything, anything. Um, I went, well, like what? I mean, he goes, okay, you want to see photographs of, of the apartment, your apartment in Clockwork, okay? You want to see? So he swings this thing round, he, he, <laughs> opens and he gets the file out, opens it up, and, it, and it's empty. <laughs> I went, well, what happened, Stan? He goes, oh, that's always the human element. <laughs> you got to figure that out. <clears throat> so obviously the secretary forgot to put the photographs back in the file. But he was uh, an extraordinary man uh, and had a very dark, black sense of humor. Uh, for instance, you know, when we came to do the scene 
uh, of the rape of the writer's wife and beating him up and everything, which on paper was rather sordid and rather nasty. Um, you know, we sat around for three or four days, or four or five days, uh, trying to figure out what to do. And, um, you know, what he'd written down was sort of rather naturalistic and really wasn't going to work in the film as we'd shot up to that point. So, um, anyway, at one point he came up to me and said, can you dance? <laughs> now, I'm not a dancer, but I was bored stiff. So I went, can I dance? <laughs> I'm singing in the rain, doom. Just singing in the rain, boom. And suddenly I looked over at Stanley, he was absolutely, had tears in his eyes, he was laughing so hard. He shoved him a, a handkerchief in his mouth and uh, I kind of finished the sort of improv. He grabbed hold of me, shoved him in his car, we drove back to his house, which was about 20 minutes away or something, and. He was on the phone to New York and he bought the rights to Singing in the Rain. <laughs> then we went back and we shot that improv. And I, I kept saying to the, to the script lady, you know, I kept saying, what did I do then? Do you, anybody remember here what I did? You know, because of course it was just purely off the cuff. And you can never remember what you did, you know. Anyway, um, it took a week to shoot the damn thing, but we got it and, it, and it's sort of, really uh, it says a lot about that film, you know, that particular sequence, you know, because you take such an iconic image as, you know, Gene Kelly swinging around the lamppost and the whole deal and, you know, the, I'm singing in the rain, you know, all that stuff, and, and, and he was great. Yeah, and of course, you know, as a young man, it was indelibly put into my brain that this was how euphoria was. You know, Hollywood's a great propaganda tool, isn't it? So, you know, if you want to show euphoria, then you immediately go into Singing in the Rain, which is, you know, I was beating and raping and euphoric. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, I naturally started singing that song. Anyway, we did it. It was in the film. It caused a bit of a hoorah at the time. And a year later, when the film that being cut and open to huge business and all the rest of it, I came over to Hollywood at the guest of Warner Brothers and um, my minder, one of these guys, you know, in the publicity department, said, Malcolm, would you like to, there's a party uh, tonight um, at some, some uh, in the flats of Beverly Hills, it's one of these parties where a lot of these stars are going to be, do you want to go? And I went, yeah, that's why I'm here, I want to meet all these stars. And so we go in there and he goes, oh my God, you're not going to believe this, but Gene Kelly's here. <laughs> oh, Gene Kelly, I'd love to meet Gene Kelly. I mean, you know, it was an homage. So he goes, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> he goes, taps Gene on the shoulder. He's got his back to me. He turns and he said, Gene, I'd like you to meet Martha McDowell. He turned, he looked at me. And he just walked away like that. <laughs> Gene, I, I, I forgave you. I did. You're a rude son of a bitch, but I forgave you because I completely fucked up your moment in history and I'm sorry. It's <laughs> just the way it is. He didn't really find it very funny, and, and you know, um, the film was frowned upon. Kubrick was considered a maverick, a renegade. He'd left America and he'd left Hollywood. He shot one movie in Hollywood and he hated it so much, and he hated Kirk Douglas so much, and so, and he took, tried to take his name off Spartacus. Now, I think Spartacus is actually a very fine, epic movie, you know, and there's nothing wrong. Stanley hated it, and he didn't even consider it one of his movies, because he had, you know, he had to take orders from Kurt, you know, and, and he hated that. But, um, anyway, um, so Hollywood was a strange, had a strange relationship with Kubrick. Uh, they 
weren't very fond of him. They never gave him an Oscar for Best Director, which is, of course, just shows you how really um, serious the Academy Awards are. 